Hi everyone, welcome to my online music teaching setup. So if you don't already know, my name is Elizabeth and I'm a violist. I run the blog lifefromthevioloSection.com and today I'm going to show you where I currently teach my piano, violin, and viola students, which are all online right now because of COVID. So as you can see, I have my laptop set up, the software that I use is Zoom, and I do use an external webcam and a microphone, which I will get into very soon. So this space has been used for many different things. It's just a building on my parents' property and I used to have my birthday parties in here. At one point, it was my dad's office for work and some of his decorations are still up in here and now it's my studio and practice desk space, all of that. So we've got a mix of like car stuff and my stuff back here, my boyfriend's base. Like it's a huge mixture of a lot of stuff, but at least you know, what my students see, it's pretty much just my stuff with a big bass in the background, but I'm working with what I've got, as we all are right now. So I usually like to use my AirPods when I'm teaching and when I have lessons of my own with my teacher. So um, I find that rather than headphones, the quality might not be quite as good as headphones, but it's much easier for me to play and do things and I don't have to be worried about a wire as I move around. So I found these to be very handy in online teaching. Okay, so we're all set up. This is what my setup looks like. So if you're a student of mine, this is probably what you would be seeing. So my desk is right behind me. You might remember this from some of my other videos. I filmed a few videos right in front of my desk. My boyfriend's bass is in the back and here we have my viola in case I need to play in the lesson, which, you know, I almost always do. And I have my keyboard right here for my piano students and if I need to just play the piano as an example for anything. So typically for my lessons, I use my Samson Go mic, which I talked a lot about in my How to Ace Your Virtual College Audition video that I made back in January. So this is just a handy little USB mic. Um, hopefully you'll see in the video that it's plugged into a USB port on my laptop, and then I just connect it over onto the music stand that holds my laptop. And then the webcam I use was just maybe like $25, I think, on Amazon. On the back it says, model W2 1080p webcam, lens 3.6 millimeters. I don't think the rest matters, but um, this is what it looks like. I did put this lens cap thing on sideways. It came with it. You just had to attach it yourself. It's supposed to go up and down, but I kind of like it left and right better. But it does cover up these two little lights that show um, if you're on or if you're off. So. But, you know, I, I only plug it in when I'm going to use it, so that hasn't really been a problem for me. So this is what my basic audio settings look like. The microphone is the Samsung Go mic, and I have the speaker as my AirPod, so that's where the sound is going to come out of. That's where I'm going to hear my students. Some of the more advanced settings, the output is controlled by, you know, your laptop volume controls. And then the microphone, the input level, you can change that depending on if you're too quiet, too loud. I have it... Um, only on low for suppressed background noise so that you can hear when I play and it's not thinking that it's background noise and it doesn't try to, you know, take the sound out or anything. Have high fidelity music mode on it and echo cancellation is on just in case someone isn't using headphones or anything then they're not hearing themselves and getting in that loop where it's like a constant echo. <laughs> So when I teach, I really like to use my iPad as a second screen and I share the screen within Zoom so that we can go over worksheets and I have kind of a whiteboard option. That's really helped and my students really enjoy that. So I'm going to show you now how exactly I do that. So over in Zoom, I go down to the bottom bar where it says share screen. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see these controls through the recording because I am recording through Zoom rather than doing a screen record, but I press share screen then iPhone or iPad via cable. There we go. Sometimes it takes a second. So this would be a worksheet that I would use with some of my piano students, just naming different intervals. So, you know, I'll ask them, okay, what interval is this? And it's a fifth, so I write it in and you can see it on the screen. Or if I want to write some notes in, you can easily do that. looks great and it's a really nice easy way to teach when we're used to you know doing worksheets with our students or having a whiteboard or just being able to show them examples having an iPad and being able to do this has been really really helpful for online teaching 
Another way I use my iPad for lessons is to take notes for my students and give them assignments for the week. So here on my iPad I have imaginary students viola notes that I created just for this video. So I start by writing the date and then the pieces that we're playing. So let's say they are working on the Walton Viola Concerto, which I don't have anyone working on that right now, but say that's what they're working on. And I want to remind them to play with a slow bow at the beginning. About well, memorize the first page because they're going to do it for a competition. Sounds cool. <laughs> so I make these notes for my students. Let's say um, scales. Usually I do scales first, but choose two scales each time you practice you know just things like that and then i'll also write like things that went well so great great job with c major today you know little things like that things that they can work on and things that they did really well so they have a nice mix of things that they can work on and just some compliments so that they feel good about what they're accomplishing so for my iPad, when I need to write a lot, I use this Bluetooth keyboard. I did not mention this in my What's on My iPad video, but I'm sure I'll talk about it in future videos. I actually got this back in 2015 when I got my old iPad, but it works just fine with this one. It just connects with Bluetooth. There's um, an easy connect button for the first time that you do it. But after the first time, you know, your iPad always recognizes it and I've had no trouble pairing it at all and it just works nicely like any other keyboard. It even has the arrow keys, command, option, control. You can use it with anything really. I've even used it with my laptop before, but it's very, very handy to have with my iPad because I really, really, really hate typing on the iPad screen. It's just so bulky. I have such a hard time with it. I, of course, always have water with me when I teach because talking that much makes me really, really, really thirsty, just like when I record videos. <laughs> And of course I have my viola nearby so that I can play examples for my students and so that I can, you know, play the music for them and give them a good example to look up to. So you can see what I'm doing and then of course, you know, I'll change the angle depending on what I want to show them. So if I'm showing them my thumb, just go this way. <laughs> you can really easily see my fingerings and what string I'm on over here. Bow stuff right here. So at least in the chair that I'm in, which is my desk chair, it's really easy for me to scoot around all different angles in this chair, which is very helpful for teaching. And of course, I always have my music nearby. Um, this is my piano music. I have viola and violin music all throughout the room. I just get out whatever I need for each student. And then I also have a lot of music on my iPad and I'll just, you know, go through on my iPad and follow along there when my students are playing. So having the music nearby at all times is very, very important for me. I always need to have the music so that I can reference specific measure numbers and, you know, which line and see what fingerings might be printed in the music, things like that, rather than like at an in-person lesson, you can just look at the student's music. I can't do that anymore. So having my own copies of the music nearby, easily accessible is very, very important. Okay, so here you can actually see what my setup looks like from my end. I have my webcam right here. It easily connects onto my laptop, just rests there. And then I have my external mic just clipped onto the music stand. Nice and easy. I have this dongle that I talked about in my college audition video, which gives me ethernet. And then I plug my webcam and my iPad in through here and the mic on the side. So there's the stand. My iPad's over here. It gets moved around, especially if I'm teaching piano and I'm playing the piano. I usually need to move it or keep it on my lap. And then music is right there. My AirPod case is handy. Apple Pencil. Sometimes it goes up here. Sometimes I lose it on the music stand, but I try to keep it handy. <laughs> then all of my music. Let's go around the other way. We've got 
tripod in the way today, but here is my viola right next to my chair. So nice compact setup and everything is easy to find. Everything kind of has a place. It's just a nice setup and I, I've got it down and it's worked really well for me these last few months. So that is my entire online music teaching setup. If you have any questions or would like to see anything more in depth, whether that's related to this setup or not, just let me know. And if you have any ideas of how I can improve this even more, I would love to hear that. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more music content. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.